Um, I want to move over to the irregular past participles just to walk through these, look at um, what their irregular past participles are, and then I'll bring us back to finish with this. And so uh, we have here abrir, morir, absolver, poner, cubrir, decir, romper, escribir, resolver, satisfacer, hacer, ver y volver. Now, a lot of these actually have prefixes, and I'll highlight a couple of those. And, uh, and so obviously the prefix uh, will, you know, for example, before I get too carried away, uh, we'll just put oponer here, which means to oppose. So oponer, with its pre, uh, past participle being puesto, it would just become opuesto, right? And so that's how the prefixes would work with these. So let me erase that, and we'll start from the top. So abrir is to open, and so its past participle is abierto, right? Morir means to die. Its past participle is muerto. Absorber means to absolve, and its past participle is absuelto. Poner is to put, and its past participle is puesto. Like I said, if you wanted to add the prefixes that come along with, you know, the root verb poner, we'll, we'll put another one up for fun. So componer, which means to compose or put something together, right? That uh, past participle would be compuesto, of course, because componer in and of itself is a verb and therefore its past participle would have to consider that prefix. And so um, cubrir means to cover and its past participle was cubierto. Another example, just sort of building off of that prefix idea is descubrir. Descubrir means to discover. And so naturally, if you wanted to say discovered, for example, right? Uh, I had discovered a cool new class to take at the university, right? I don't know. That's a, that's a decent example, I guess. But either way, um, or we had discovered, or los, los antropologos, the anthropologists, habían descubierto ruinas en Honduras. So the anthropologists had discovered ruins in Honduras, for example. Um, anyways, moving along. Uh, decir means to, to tell or say. Its past participle is dicho. Romper is to break, and its past participle is roto. I'm going to put a little asterisk right there, and I'm going to put it right here too. Escribir is to write, and its past participle is escrito. Now I want to pause on these two uh, as we run through. Uh, romper and escribir, probably more so escribir than even romper. Uh, a common mistake for these two and the other ones, as you're learning um, that these are irregulars, in fact. For example, escribir, a lot of times a common mistake is to say escribido. And you'll hear people say that. And again, like I said, that's a common mistake. Now, that's wrong. And while people do understand if you said escribido, it's grammatically incorrect. However, just know that it's past participle, the proper past participle, is escrito. And it'll take some time, and you'll dial these in. But the cool part to all of them, like I said, is what is irregular here for the past perfect indicative is irregular for all past participles, or sorry, for uh, all perfect tenses. Well, those past participles that are irregular are irregular for all uh, perfect tenses. That was a mouthful. So, all right, moving right along. Resolver becomes resuelto. Satisfacer becomes satisfecho. Hacer becomes hecho. Ver, to see, becomes visto. And by the way, hacer means to make or do. Satisfacer means to satisfy. And resolver means to resolve. Kind of skipped over this. But uh, ver, again, visto. And then volver, last but not least, uh, means to return. And that's vuelto. Now, another fun one is devolver. So while volver really refers to like a person or say an animal or something like that, returning, like volver a casa to return to the house, de volver is returning or referring to say returning an item, like 
You bought something, you didn't like it, you're returning. You can devolver una camiseta, for example, right? And so all that to say, if you were to use that as a past participle, it would be devuelto, right? And so again, that, past, uh, that prefix comes right along with it because it, in effect, is its own verb. So anyways, hopefully that was helpful. And like I said, just to reiterate, what you see here as irregulars are not only irregulars here for the past perfect indicative, but they're irregulars for all the perfect tenses.